scripture for you people. We welcome other people. <laughs> Let's read Amos 5. Chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. I don't know if this is a scripture that we need to read, but let's read it. Amos. Chapter 5, yes. Are you there? Let's start from 22. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings, and your grain offerings, I will not accept them. And I will not even look at the peace offering of your fattened animals. Take the noise of your sons away from me. They are an irritation. I will not even listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice run down like waters. And righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Did you bring me sacrifices and grain offerings during those 40 years in the wilderness? Let's leave it there. This is the time that when we want to offer God, we know that we are not buying God. We know that he is not interested in our offering. From the wrong source. Offering from the wrong source. If you can read here, you will see that he doesn't care about any offering. I just remember when, when he said, All these animals belong to you. If you want offer you can go and kill them. Look how God here tried to make us to understand that our offering that he needs is when we do what is right. He said he wants justice. Not issues of saying, when I'm giving, I might be helping God. If you read that verse, it should, especially 22. It says, though you offer me, I will not accept them. Because it shows that, number one, offering is there to be accepted by God. But not that he's crying for it. But when he offer it, he accepts it. He can reject it. If we can check, remember Genesis 4. When the Bible says he rejected God. Cain with his offering. And he accept offering of Abel. And he even offer Abel. To say that Cain had jealousy. It means there is something that God does when he accepts our offering. We become better than our people around us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God must accept your offering. But not because he wants your offering. Because your offering must have 
right source. Just Justice and righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at verse 23 because I want to read what you talk. I want us to read and talk. He says what? Well, take the noise of your song away from me. I won't even listen to the melody of your harps. Let justice, verse 24, run down like waters. And righteousness like ever flowing stream. Here God is saying, he wants us to hear and do what is right. Just, justice and righteousness are from our hearing are not from our ability. I don't know if you are hearing me. Justice and righteousness are from our hearing are not from you know, you can still, because of your ability, become better than the one who have got nothing. Out of your ability, you can give better than the one who doesn't have anything. But God wants a hearing heart. When you offer what you offer, God wants it to be like you can even do it after you have done it. Like flowing. You can do it because God wants it to be done that way. It if it's required after you have done it, you can still do it. I don't know if you are hearing me. So there have to be justice and righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. If not, we are wasting our time. Many times we come to church and we have this time that is judging us. We might be facing a lot of rejection. Allow God to accept you and offer you. There is a benefit. When God accepts you and accepts your offering, there is a great benefit. Today, when God accepts you and your offering, you will bring that blessing you is required. Those blessings you are waiting for will come upon your life in the name of Jesus. Look here. He shows that when you were in the desert, when you were in the desert, did you give me offering? You know what he's saying? He's saying, don't offer as if I was waiting for your offering because even before when you have you don't have ability, you were not offering. There was a time you have desert. Or you were in the desert. And God was still the same God even of today. Tell the neighbor, say, my friend. Your present and your past cannot change the way God is. So, when God speaks with you, he requires righteousness, he requires justice, whether you are in the desert or you are not in the desert, it takes your hearing out. Tell your neighbor, it takes what? Your hearing out. If you can hear when you are in the desert, you can still hear when, when you are in the city. I, I want to prophesy someone here who is here today. God is going to give you a hearing heart. 
there will be no offering that will fall down and you find it does not give out fruits. This year, people wow. will see the fruits of your offering. They will see fruits that are coming to you. You are not wasting anything when you offer. There is no labor that is in vain in the Lord. The grace is following you. Favor is upon your life. In the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Listen, many times when God said, when I was in the desert, we think about the desert of Israel. I'm also thinking about your desert now. Look where you are now. You don't have anything now. But God is still saying, do what is right. Execute justice. Because God, when he blesses you and makes blessings permanent, is when you become faithful when even when you are full. God is requiring something from you. And that thing is justice and righteousness. I've got nothing but I can hear. God wants me to give this. I've got nothing but I can still hear God speaking in emptiness. I can hear God clear in riches I will Do you know that it's easy to miss the voice of God when you are rich than when you are poor. When you are poor, you can still say, if I had some, do what God said. But when you are rich, you can rather demean what God is telling you and you minimize what God is saying. You give small. There are some people who are here today that I can see that today is their day to act according to the will of God. And I can assure you doors are open for you. I can tell you doors are open for you. I said doors are open for you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Tell somebody, say, are you in the desert? Or you are in the city? You must know God is not interested in your offering. He's interested in you doing justice and righteousness. Glory be to God. You know, there are many people who are crying to be blessed, but what if God tells you to give what you have? What are you going to offer? You know, before God wants to do something very big, He wants you to release something you think is the best. You know, we have been preaching this, preaching that. And we are not reaching that level. Last week I was telling you that one of our problems is we are depending on our jobs. Even when we give, we give according to our salaries. Not according to God. I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. In fact, our God is limited to our salary. If God can say, give your salary, you will fight him that day. Because your voice of God is limited to your salary. If you say, give beyond your salary, you will just stand up and cast this God. I, I mind you, you are not, you are not God. If you are God, you know how much I'm getting. If you are God, you know how much I'm getting. You can't, if you just hear the voice, of course, say, hey, Jerry, wake up. 
Can you give one million? Uh, no, God, you are not God. If you are God, you know, this church can give one million. If you are God, you are any 15,000. How can you search church and you know one million? You are not God, you are not God. You are not God. You are not God. You must provide first and uh, give first. If we read the scriptures, Paul said, I taught people concerning giving and receiving. We don't receive first and we give. We, we, we give first. We, we, we don't reap before we sow. We sow first and we wait for the right time. I speak with someone this week, there will be a harvest in the world. If you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. How many of you are ready for the harvest this week? Eh? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a miracle harvest. You sow you harvest. It is your time. It is your time. Congratulations.